My name is Elizabeth Uchimura, and I'll be telling a grim fairy tale by the name of Hans in Luck. Once upon a time, there was a man named Hans, and he had worked seven very long and hard years for a farmer. And so at the end of the seven years, he went to the farmer and asked for his payment. And the farmer gave it to him in the form of a silver coin as big as his head. So he started on the very long journey back to his mother to bring home his wages. Well, after a while, that coin got very heavy and he needed a rest. So he sat on the side of the road. And while he was sitting there, a rider came along on a horse. And Hans said to the man, oh, it must be so nice to have a horse that you can ride and, and not have any idea how far you've gone. So nice. And the rider, eyeing the coin by Hans, said, well, I might be willing to part ways with this horse for the right price. And Hans said, well, what price would that be? And the rider said, I'm sure that silver coin could do just fine. And so Hans and the man traded their coin and the horse. And as Hans started going on his way, the rider turned back and yelled, just remember, when you want to go very fast, you yell, yip, yip. And Hans said, thank you so much, and continued on his way. Well, after a while, he decided, well, let's see how fast this horse can really go. So he said, yip, yip, and the horse jolted, and Hans flew off the back of the horse and into some bushes off to the side of the road. And he thought that horse must be gone forever. So as he was getting up and brushing himself off and getting up back onto the road, a man with a cow and Hans's horse was coming up the road. And he said, oh, this is a mighty fine beast you have here. I saw you get thrown off, so I figured I could return it to you. And Hans said, thank you so much. I didn't realize what a burden these horses would be. They're so big and hard to control. It must be so nice to have a cow that you can walk leisurely beside and then have all the milk and cheese and butter that you could ever want. And the man looking at him or looking at the horse said, well, I might be willing to part ways with the cow for the right price. And Hans said, well, what price would that be? And the man said, I, I bet that horse would do just fine. And so Hans and the man traded their horse and cow, and Hans went on his merry way with the cow, so excited to show his mother the, uh, all the milk and cheese and butter that they would have for the, for the rest of their lives. Well, after a while, Hans got really thirsty, and he figured, what a great way to test out this cow. I'll get some milk from it. So he took the udders, and he pulled, and he pulled, and nothing came out. So he tried again. He pulled and he pulled, still nothing. Well, soon a butcher with a pig came along and said, what are you doing there, lad? And Hans said, I'm trying to get some milk out of this cow. I'm so very thirsty. And the butcher said, you're not gonna get anything out of that cow. It is way too old. The only thing that cow's good for is the slaughterhouse. Well, Hans wailed and said, what a burden this cow has become. All I wanted was some milk and cheese and butter, and now I, I only have beef, and I don't even like beef. At least you have a pig, and then you can get tender sausage out of it. And the butcher thought and looked at the cow and said, well, I might be willing to part ways with this pig for the right price. And Hans said, what's your price? And the butcher said, I'm sure that cow would do just fine. And so Hans and the man traded the cow and the pig and Hans went on his merry way with his pig. Well, after a while, he encountered a young man with a goose. And Hans complimented the man on his goose and he said, you have such a fine goose there. And the man said, oh yes, this goose is so plump already. In a few years, it'll be the best roast you've ever had. Uh, say, where did you get that pig? And Han said, oh, this pig? And the lad said, yeah, I, you know, um, I think that, well, I think that that pig was stolen. I, yes, that's right. The town over next over has been looking for a stolen pig. Uh, their squire lost their pig and it was stolen a few days ago. If you're seen with that pig, you're going to get in so much trouble. 
And Hans wailed, oh, what a burden this pig has become. I just wanted some tender sausage meat. Whatever shall I do? And the young lad said, well, you know, I think I know a place I could take the pig, so then you wouldn't get in any trouble. And just out of the kindness of my own heart, I'll even give you this goose just to take with you, because I know you're in such bad luck. And Hans said, oh, thank you so much for helping me out. And he went on his way with his goose. Well, eventually, he's, he came to a town and passed a knife grinder. And the knife grinder was whistling and was happy. And so Hans came up to him and said, do you love your job, knife grinder? And the knife grinder said, oh yes, there are always knives to be sharpened. A knife grinder can put his hand in his pocket at any time and find money in it because there's always work for us to do. And then noticing the goose, the knife grinder said, hey, where'd you get that goose? And Hans said, oh, I traded this for a pig. And the knife grinder said, so where'd you get the pig? And Hans said, I traded that for a cow. And the knife grinder said, and the cow? Oh, I traded that for a horse. And the horse? I traded that for a silver coin as big as my head. Oh, okay, and the silver coin, where'd you get that? Oh, I worked seven long and hard years for that. And the knife grinder sat and thought to himself, looking at the goose. And then he turned to Hans and he said, you know, I bet that I have some very nice grinding stones in the back. I could give them to you and get you started on your own business. And Hans said, that's such a wonderful thing, but what can I give you in return? I'm sure there's something I would need to give you. And the man said, I'm sure that goose would do just fine. And so Hans said, of course, that would be amazing. So the knife grinder ran to the back of his house and he looked on the ground for the biggest stone he could find. And he lugged it back to Hans and he said, now this is the finest knife grinding stone that there is in the land. It is sure to give you m much work and be such a wonderful stone to you. It's worth a lot. So I'm, you know, so I'm taking this goose for, for a good bargain. And Hans said, oh, thank you so, so much. And he went on his way and started lugging his big grinding stone. Well, after a while, that stone grew very heavy. And so Hans, spotting a well up ahead, brought it to the well and heaved it up onto the ledge of the well. But as he leaned in to grab the pail, the stone started teetering and Hans swung to catch the, the stone and he missed. And so the stone fell and it fell and it fell and it fell until pop, it landed at the bottom of the well. And Hans just stared at it. And then he started leaping for joy and singing praises to the gods. And he said, thank you so much for lifting all of my burdens. I'm now free from everything that was weighing heavy on me or giving me trouble. Thank you so much. And so he ran all the rest of the way home to his mother, singing praises, thanking the gods that all of his burdens had been lifted. The end.